Grace and peace to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on this first Sunday of Advent. It is wonderful to see all of you and to see all the joy exuding from the conversations as we were gathering this morning. Before we begin our worship, I have a few announcements. First one is that next Sunday is Communion Sunday, so I invite you to prepare your communion elements. We'll send you information about that with the link next week. And then the second one, I invite Shelly Peterson to share a minute for mission with us on behalf of the Benevolence Committee. Shelly. Thank you. You may remember that an Advent season, we often, um, the Benevolence Committee offers you a way to give back to the world, give a gift to the world, if you will. Uh, and this year, we are going to uh, collect for buying pairs of goats to help with um, the hunger issues of the world. Um, this is something that we just do across the Advent season, and um, I will try to keep you uh, abreast of how successful we are, but I wanted to share um, that we did put a, a advertise, or advertisement announcement in the um, newsletter, hopefully you saw it. And um, my, my granddaughter thinks we're gonna have the goats here at the house. And so we're, we're very excited about that. But <laughs> So I just urge you uh, to think about if you and your family want to uh, join together and contribute to this uh, wonderful way of um, helping those in need uh, internationally. And if you have any questions at all, uh, please let me know. Um, the, the method is very simple, just writing a check to Westminster and putting goats on the memo line. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Well, with that, let us prepare our hearts to enter this season of Advent. Let us worship God. The power of dreams lies in waking up. For when we close our eyes, We can see a better world. When we close our eyes, we can dream a better dream. But when we open our eyes, we begin the work of faith. The power of worship is the same. When we enter this space, we can see a better world. When we enter this space, we dream a better dream. But when we leave this space, we begin the work of faith. So come in, dream your dream. Find hope here. For in an hour, we will begin the work of faith. Let it be so. Today we light the candle of hope. I dream of sunflower fields. I dream of key lime pie with a mile high meringue. I dream of the days when we could be part of a crowd. I dream of snow days. I dream of empty beds in jail cells. I dream of a world that will let kids be kids. I dream of full tables instead of empty bellies. I dream of schools with enough money to teach. I dream of parents with enough money to feed. I dream to keep awake because if we don't dream of better days, then we might forget that this is not what God imagined. So today we light the candle of hope for hope is the very thing that keeps dreams afloat. Please join me in prayer. Original dreamer, over and over again in scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream 
for community and hope. We hear your dreams and yet we do not open our eyes. We continue to live with the curtains drawn, the covers pulled tight, eyes shut to the realities of the world. Forgive us, kindle a hope in us that will burn through the darkest nights. Give us the strength and the will to keep awake in this sleeping world. With hope we pray, amen. There's so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. And this grief feels like the ache is never ending. The night is long, can't find sleep. It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change Join me in prayer. Holy and gracious God, bring, pour down your Holy Spirit upon us. Open our hearts and minds so that as we hear your words of scripture spoken to us, may we be touched and transformed and filled with hope and the knowledge that even now, in the midst of our tumultuous lives, you are still working 
your dreams of justice and peace into reality. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As we begin our journey in Advent, the scripture for this first Sunday of our Advent travels comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. Listen to what the Spirit says to us on this day. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will, not pass, will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, a friend of mine with a quirky sense of humor told me about a website called raptureready.com. There is such a thing. The author of this site claims that their website is like the Dow Jones Industrial Index, only for end time activity, to help the faithful to be ready for the big moment the site provides a so-called rapture index, a kind of prophetic speedometer. The higher the number, the closer we are to the end times when believers will be snatched from the earth. So they claim. To reach this number, the index quantifies events like earthquakes, wars, famine, global turmoil, false profits, interest rates, unemployment, and plagues, of course. According to the notes on each of these various categories, the plague category this year has been maxed out by the pandemic, bringing the score on the rapture index to a high of 121 points, way above the 160 point mark, the threshold specified by this site, when believers need to fasten their seat belts, for based on what's going on in the world, the showdown is imminent. As I stand here in the empty sanctuary with Pong and Jack as my only company on this first Sunday of Advent, only company in person that is, I don't think we need signs like this rapture index to bring home yet another painful reminder 
that we live in strange times, whether these are the end times we'll leave for others to speculate about. But we are quite aware of the strangeness of these times as we have just finished celebrating Thanksgiving where many of us felt the need to adjust our plans the way we celebrate this holiday in, in, the, in the face of rising COVID infection rates, canceled travel plans, Zoom get-togethers with family and friends, lonely meals have been the reality for many of us at the end of this already really hard year. So hearing these words from Mark's gospel, from this passage that the lectionary assigns for the first Sunday of Advent, feels eerily appropriate as we enter the season of Advent this year. Not because it's forecasting this imminent time of rapture, as this and similar texts described as apocalyptic writings have been used and abused for that purpose. But this text feels appropriate because this passage known as the little apocalypse of Mark offers hope to people living in despair, calling them to be alert to the revelation of God here and now. For apocalypse means revelation, literally. And Mark is writing to his community that is dealing with the trauma of the destruction of the temple by the Romans. With the center of their worship ruined, the Markan community may have been struggling with some questions that are not far off from our own hearts. What does faithful worship of God look like under the circumstances? Where is God in the midst of this? Is God even present? in the midst of all this turmoil? Is God powerful enough to create any semblance of peace and order out of the chaos of the day? But do not fear, for Mark's gospel is a gospel of hope. Mark assures his community from the start that God is broken into the midst of their messy reality. God is present in the here and now, revealing God's beloved to as the heavens are rendered open and as God's spirit bursts upon Jesus, who is emerging from the waters of baptism in the Jordan. And this promise is upheld throughout the gospel. In the last chapter, we hear Mary and Mary Magdalene be told, Jesus is not here. He was raised. Go and tell his disciples that he is going ahead of you. For God is still present. God is still actively, unexpectedly working out God's purposes in the world. Our story that comes shortly before Jesus' arrest, betrayal, and death pulls back the curtain, so to say, about the false hopes and the realities around us in order to reveal this commitment of God to enter into and redeem our lives and the world. What more appropriate message for Advent than this? For Advent is a time for hope, a time for, to wait for Jesus' coming, a time to wait for God's reign of justice and peace to be fulfilled. And as our story reminds us, Advent is also a time for telling the truth about our weariness, about our anxieties, and about our failures. This is a time to stop, to take a step back, so we can grieve our losses, to take time to lament our failures as individuals and as community to love our neighbors and care for our neighbors as ourselves. 
But Advent is also a time to tell the truth about God's relentless love for each one of us and for the world, even in spite of all this messy reality. For according to Mark, to live into hope is to be vigilant, to keep awake, to keep alert and on watch for God, even when the disciples, even when we feel helpless. Theologian Emily Towns describes hope this way. She says, hope means we have opened our eyes, our hearts and our minds and our souls, our very spirits. And now we see and feel and touch and smell the joy and the agony living in the fractures of creation. For both joy and agony are present in the brokenness of the world. And when we keep awake, keep alert to God's presence, we recognize all of it. This Advent is going to be different for, from what we have been used to because many of our rituals and traditions that shaped this season will have to look different due to the limitation imposed on us by the pandemic as we journey forward with our eyes and minds and souls with our very spirit open to searching for God's presence. But our story presents us an invitation and an opportunity to keep awake, to keep watch for God. Keep dreaming for a bigger world where love and goodness have the last word over hate and death. Where God's creatures, both human and non-human alike, can enjoy God's abundant provision and grow into their God-given potential. In the midst of these tumultuous times, we keep watch for God as we deeply long for the experience of deep connections in the midst of isolation. We keep awake to see the glimmers of light in the midst of darkness, to see shoots of hope in all that wearies us, to see signs of peace in all the chaos, to observe gestures of love in all the division around us, and glimpses of joy in our many sorrows. So I, I invite you this Advent to maybe take a journal, and as we journey forward in the coming weeks, Jot down, where do you see light? Where do you experience connection? Where do you see shoots of hope, gestures of kindness, and glimpses of joy be manifested? Advent invites us to keep awake for God. And being awake means looking for Christ in the people whom we cross paths with or whom we get together on Zoom with, to look for Christ in all that we do, in all the spaces where we connect with one another. Being awake means being aware and even enraged by and willing to protest in solidarity with people who are pushed to the margins of society. So as we enjoy the light of the candle of hope on this first Sunday of Advent, we keep awake by dreaming, by envisioning how we will live God's promise to be with us. For we expect God to be with us and meet us on the other side of this pandemic and this societal turmoil. For on the other side of all this is not the normal, but it's living the hope of God continued peace and justice being revealed. We do not know the day 
or the hour. What we do know as African-American poet Langston Hughes says, of holding fast to the dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. So let us enter this season holding on to hope, keeping awake for God. For God continues to surprisingly, mysteriously work out God's purposes in our midst. May it be so. Amen. We now invite you to unmute your microphones if you have a joy or prayer concern to share with us. And then Rachel and Eric will lead us into prayer after our time of sharing. If there are no other joys or concerns to be shared, then let us join our hearts in prayer. God, let your hope arise in our hearts. Lift our eyes up to see that you alone are where our hope comes from. Help us to shake off the anxiety, discouragements, and uncertainties that have filled this year. May we pause to remember that we have hope in you. You know the end of our stories, and we give thanks because you have promised that it will be a victorious ending. Give us the grace we need to wrap up this year joyfully. We invite your spirit into this beautiful Advent season. Renew our sense of holy anticipation. 
Let us be those who are waiting eagerly for Jesus to come again. And more than anything, we ask that you be glorified in this season of expectation. Amen. Let us now go out into the world, keeping awake, looking for God's presence in the shoots of hope, in the connections we experience, in the glimpses of joy. For we have this promise as we journey through Advent and through these tumultuous days that God is present here and now, dreaming and working out God's visions of peace and justice for all. May we go knowing the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who accompanies us today and every day. Go in peace. <laughs>